Big story over the holiday, 64-year-old Diana Nyad became the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida this without a shark cage. Phenomenal, yeah. She completed the 110-mile journey in about 53 hours, a goal that she has been chasing since 1968. It was her fifth attempt, and it is one of the most incredible athletic feats in history, most incredible moments, period, in history. And I'll tell you, Anderson, I've met a lot of extraordinary people, as have you, throughout the years, but she is one of the ones that has inspired me the most. I decided the remedy to all this malaise was going to be for me to chase an elevated dream, an extreme dream, something that would require utter conviction and unwavering passion, something that would make me be my best self in every aspect of my life, every minute of every day, because the dream was so big that I couldn't get there without that kind of behavior and that kind of conviction. And I decided it was an old dream, it was lingering, it was from so many years ago, three decades ago, the only sort of world-class swim I had tried and failed at back in my 20s was going from Cuba to Florida. And I started to train. I hadn't swum for 31 years, not a stroke. And I had kept in good shape, but swimming's a whole different animal. As a matter of fact, this picture is supposed to be me during training. It's a smiling face. And when you're training for this sport, you are not smiling. Um, it's an arduous, difficult sport, and I don't remember smiling um, <clears throat> at, at any time uh, during this sport. It, it, as I said, I respect other sports, and I compare this sport sometimes to cycling and to mountain climbing and, and other of the expedition-type events, but this is a sensory deprivation, a, a physical duress, and when I started in with the 8 hours and the 10 hours and the 12 hours and the 14 hours and the 15 hours and the 24-hour swims, I knew I had it. You know, the sport is sort of a microcosm of life itself. First of all, you're going to hit obstacles. And even though you're feeling great at any one moment, don't take it for granted. Be ready, because there's going to be pain. There's going to be suffering. It's not going to feel this good all the way across. And I was thinking of the hypothermia and maybe some shoulder pain and, you know, all the other things, the vomiting that comes from being in the salt water. You're immersed in a liquid that uh, your body doesn't like the salt water. After a couple of days, three days, you tend to, you know, rebel in, in a lot of physical ways. The mantra is, and I've been using it in training, find a way. You have a dream, and you have obstacles in front of you, as we all do. None of us ever get through this life without heartache, without turmoil. And if you believe and you have faith, and you can get knocked down and get back up again and you believe in perseverance as a great human quality, you find your way. And Bonnie grabbed my shoulders and she said, let's find our way to Florida. And we started and for the next 53 hours, oh, it was an intense, unforgettable life experience. We did it, I didn't do it, we did it. And we'll never forget it, it'll always be part of us. And the three things I did sort of blurred out when we got there was first, never, ever give up. I live it. What's the phrase from today from Socrates? To be, is to, do. to be is to do. So I don't stand up and say, don't ever give up. I didn't give up. There was action behind these words. The second is, you can chase your dreams at any age. You're never too old. 64, that no one, at any age, any gender could ever do, has done it, and has no doubt in my mind that I am at the prime of my life today. Yeah. Thank you. And the third thing I said on that beach was, it looks like the most solitary endeavor in the world, and in many ways, of course, it is, and in other ways, and the most important ways, it's a team.